Hi everyone, I'm Su Jingling from National Taiwan University. Today I will present our research investigating advertisers' domain changing behaviors and their impact on ad blocker filter list. This is a joint work with Kan Xiangzhou, Yan Chen, Xu Junxiao, Darren Cassell, Lu Yu Bauer, and Li Ming Zhao. So, first, we explain how most ad blocker works. Ad blockers rely on static filter list to block ad domains. The filter list consists of rules that cover non ad domains and trackers. For example, if the browser tries to send a request to ad domain doubleclick.com, it will be blocked because the domain is in the filter list. Therefore, advertisers use different approaches to, to circumvent ad blockers. One of the approach is to adopt anti-ad blockers. Anti-ad blockers forces the user to disable the ad blocker to continue browsing a website. Here you can see an example of anti-ad blockers pop-up, require the user to disable the ad blocker to continue browsing. Although it can circumvent ad blockers, it requires user interaction and has negative impact on user experience. Previous research observed that advertisers change domains to circumvent ad blockers. For instance, because doubleclick.com is already, is already blocked, the advertiser register and change to another domain doubleclick2.com to serve the identical ad content. Because the domain is not in the filter list, it can successfully bypass the ad blockers. However, no prior study has systematically studied the impact of domain changing behaviors on ad blocker filter list. Therefore, to understand the impact, we would like to study on the behavior of this domain changing behavior. In the research, we define this kind of domain as replica ad domain, red domains. In the example, dom doubleclick2.com is defined as a replica ad domain. We call it red domain. Here is another real-world example by the advertisers click to. In the following table, uh, the appearing date is the time we observe the domain on the internet. And for the block date, it is the time that it is being blocked in the filter list. We can see that the advertisers change to multiple red domains to circumvent ad blockers. And it is very difficult for the filter list maintainers to catch up and block the latest red domains. As a result, our motivation is to study on the impact of red domains. First, to the best of our knowledge, there is no prior study systematically investigating the red, the red domain's influence. Only a few studies have noted the existence. Second, we would like to know the prevalence and privacy impact of red domains since it is an effective approach to circumvent ad blockers, and it has not been thoroughly studied. Third, analyzing red domains can potentially help filter list maintainers to react to domain changing behaviors, and we can provide insights to block such domains. Next, we would like to propose a few research questions and emphasize our research highlights. The first research question is, what are the common patterns of red domains? In our study, we propose methods for discovering red domains. And we also present a taxonomy of common domain changing patterns. Also, we would like to know uh, how prevalent are red domains. In our analysis, we discover red domains appear on 10.24% of the 50K website we crawled. Last, we want to measure the privacy impact of red domains. Red domains can additionally extend the time span of the original ad domain for 558 days in average, which is about one and a half years. Next, I will introduce the methodology. So how do we identify red domains? Let's still use the previously mentioned doubleclick.com as an example. So the question becomes, is the domain B doubleclick2.com and red domain of the ad domain doubleclick.com? So how do we know this domain B is a red domain of it? We will go through three steps. 
First, we check if both domains they have the same owner. And here we leverage DNS records and TLS certificates to infer the ownership of the two domains. Further, we check whether the two domains have similar functionalities or not. We use URL passes and served files to infer the functionalities. In the end, we manually verify if the domain B is an added domain by following filter lists policy. If all three conditions are satisfied, then we can infer B is a red domain of the other domain doubleclick.com. The methodology details can be found in the paper. In the next part, I will go through our results. First, we answer the first research question is how prevalent are red domains? We identified 1,748 red domains and 652 of them were not blocked as of February 2021, the time where we conduct our research. We also discovered 10.24% 10 10 of the 50K website we crawled, they sent at least one request to red domains. Both results show that the red domains are prevalent and can substantially harm users' privacy. So the next question, we would like to measure the privacy impact of red domains. What is the privacy impact? 415, which is 23.7% of the Reddit domains exhibit privacy intrusive behaviors by data goes tracking radar. This includes fingerprinting, tracking, and session replaying. Additionally, Reddit domains can extend the time span of the original added domain for 558 days in average. So both results indicate that red domains are a very effective approach to circumvent ad blockers. Next, we propose a taxonomy of domain changing common patterns. The four categories consist of using CDN domains, moving to first party subdomains, changing subdomains, and using revolving domains. Due to the time limit of our presentation, we will focus on the category moving to first party subdomains because this, this kind of pattern is the most tricky one for filter list community to block. Let's quickly see an example of this domain changing pattern moving to first party subdomains. So the user browse a website compass.com and a website sends the request to the third party ad domain tracking.kiwi.co which will be blocked because this domain is already in the filter list. Then advertiser change their domain to dynamic-js.compass.com and proxy the ad content through it. We would like to emphasize that this red domain is a first party subdomain under compass.com. It is not a third party domain. So what is the potential problems of using first party red domains? We found that filter list policy is uh, actually lenient regarding first party ad domains. According to a filter list, easy list, it will only block first party ads only if it collects a significant amount of personal data. Also, changing to a first party domain blurs the trust boundary between first and third party websites. It abuses users' trust to the first party website. Therefore, we surveyed several advertiser websites and found that advertisers encourage publishers to delegate ads using first-party proxy subdomains to bypass ad blockers. We speculate advertisers exploit the fact above mentioned to circumvent ad blockers. And we would like to provide some recommendation for content publisher and filter list maintainers. So, the first recommendation for content publishers is we suggest content publishers should be transparent about the cooperation with advertisers. They should not blur the bound trust boundary between first party and third party advertisers, as it could potentially harm users' privacy. And for filter list maintainers, we recommend that the policy should not be lenient to first party trackers. 
the policy should consider the actual information flow on the first party domains. The result and recommendation of the rest of three categories can be found in the paper. And we, we would like to discuss some possible reasons behind the use of REV domains. We manually inspect all of them and conclude four major reasons. The first is customer isolation. Several advertisers use unique domains for different customers. For example, an advertiser's reflection assigns one domain for each customer ex ex exclusively. And the second reason is localization. Some advertisers replace this country top-level domain to serve localized ad contents. Next one is the infrastructure changes. And in our data set, we also observe cases where the ad domains moved from their own ad domain to a different CDM providers. They change their infrastructure domains. The next one is intentionally invaded ad blockers. The moving to the first party subdomains mentioned earlier is an example of this category. For future work, uh, we plan to report red domains to filter list community. However, it requires an amount of manual effort to report an ad domain. Also, currently filter list community has very limited maintainers. It will also take a lot of time for them to block a red domain. So it's left as a future direction here. And our methodology has limitations. We cannot cover all of the red domains. We hope this work can spawn further, further research in this area and improve the methodology. Another future direction is to leverage our proposed approach to help filter list maintainers proactively react to red domains. So it can facilitate filter list maintainers to react to red domains and reduce the lifespan of them. And here is the conclusion. We propose method for discovering red domains by using DNS records and TLS certificates, URL, and server files to infer the ownership and functionality. We also present a taxonomy of red domain patterns consist consisting of using CDN domains, changing subdomains, moving to first party, and using revolving domains. Red domains appear on 10.24% of the website we crawled. This implies red domains are pretty prevalent. Last but not least, red domain extend the time span of the added domain for 558 days. It shows that changing subdomain is an effective approach to circumvent ad blockers. And we embrace open data. Our dataset will be published to help future researchers and filter this community. Thanks for your attention. My name is Su Jingli. Please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so I think uh, Su Jin is here available for uh, to answer any questions. Yeah, I'm not over here. So, uh, is there any questions? Yeah, I can ask a question. I'm just curious. Do you uh, thanks thanks for the presentation? First of all, Sun Jin, um, do you do you distinguish between ad blocking and anti tracking? Because I know there is like a the anti tracking tool like Ghostry, for example. They do not rely on filter lists, but rather use machine learning in the background to create the the, the lists of domains that should be. Uh, blocked, I guess. Yeah. So, so are we rely on the? Uh, I think our assumption is that it's all about filter list based uh, ad blockers. For example, like a U block origin, they relies on a static filter list. Uh, for other kind of uh, ghostery, I think maybe they use some uh, a machine learning technique to detect like fingerprinting or something. Uh, uh, we didn't use that assumption to uh, to uh, to investigate a ad blocker circumvention. And about the privacy implications for the users, what do you, I, I think you use the tracker radar from uh, uh, DuckDuckGo, yeah. right? And there you look at what domains use fingerprinting or I was just curious, yeah, how do you so, evaluate them? So, so 
uh, Data Ghost Tracker radar is based on, for, for example, like for, uh, for, for the fingerprinting, you use some dynamic approach to detect whether a JavaScript access some sensitive APIs or something, and then produce a list of domains or list of files that, that this script could potentially do some session uh, fingerprinting or, or something. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that that is uh, that's how data, how we use data ghost privacy uh, checking red dots data. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, I had a question. So thank you very much uh, for the presentation. So I wonder, did you see red domains from big players so from uh, like Google, Adobe, or Facebook? Uh, no. Uh, uh, one of the question is uh, sometimes it's very hard to find uh, like what is the true owner of these advertisers. I mean, for for some of the advertisers, they are pretty. Uh, they, they just, you can see a script and manually inspect the script and find out, okay, so this script belongs to a, a advertiser. But unfortunately, we didn't identify some red domains belong to some big players like Google or Facebook. Or something. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I still had a question of myself. Um, do you think that moving forward, um, that's um, these uh, block lists are the way to go, or should we try to invest in alternative methods of uh, ad blocking? Uh, I was, uh, this is a very tough question. I, I would suggest like uh, th these two methods have some like trade off, right? So the fir first direction is we could potentially help filters to de develop a semi auto approach to detect these threat domains. Actually, for you, block. Uh, original very popular ad blocker they already have a uh, some techniques to detect these kind of domains but it's not mature enough and for i think for another perspective it's like uh, uh we we, uh, we have ghost so ghost use some uh, machine learning technique or dynamically to detect uh, I, I think I would, they, they have a category for the, like a uh, behavior based ad blockers based on what what do you access on sensitive javascript api or something to block this kind of way. So I think uh, both both could be a potential direction for blocking advertiser and tracker domains. So yeah, I would say the, the answer is yes and no. We probably need to leverage it to, to, yeah, to block those ads. Thank you. 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 Th